Okay, what's up with it? It's your boy Lewis Cannon fucking with TM NYC. You know what it is, it's neighborhood business, IBM, it's my fucking team, and we about to get to it. Go ahead and subscribe, it's free so you don't miss what's next, and follow me on Instagram to find out the latest and about other platforms. Please smash the thumbs up, thank you. Y'all check out Goat Music for the best underground hip-hop limited releases. Link down below. Um, how was it? Uh, how was it working with Frenchie? Did you ever meet up with him? And was he a real crazy like street dude? Or I don't know. I never, I've never met him or or uh, seen him in person. But like, what is he actually like? Frenchie was cool, man. He had a good vibe. He had a real good vibe. And um, he just told us how he took a liking to us. You know, he liked our energy at the show and how he knew sleep for a long time. And, oh yeah. When we recorded, he was pretty impressed with me. And one thing he said to me, he was like, "Wow, bro, you're gonna be you're gonna be something in this game." He was like, "He was like, you got that aura, you just got that look to you, man." And then when you touch this mic, he was like sitting here watching you record. He was like, "You was like a one taker with that, bro." He was like, "Your voice is very heavy. You got a strong delivery, and you know you you kind of live the part. So it's it's gonna be pretty much easy for you." And so it was good working with him. It was like being just being in the streets with another nigga that I fuck with from the streets. You know what I mean? That's kind of what the vibe was like to me. That's what's up, man. And uh, were, were you uh, were you in the lab with them recording, or you just do tracks at separate times? No, no, I was in the lab with Frenchie. I was I was oh, okay. in the lab. We drove to uh, we recorded in Long Island. We recorded we recorded the track. Uh -huh. How did that? How did that? I haven't heard the track, but how did it all come together? Did you pick the beat, or what happened? When he heard it, did he just go off, or you play him a few beats, or how'd that all come together? Well, shout out to my to my guy, vice versa, man. You know, he produced the track, and uh, he's a he's a, a producer from here in Rochester. But he, if you a Rochester legend or you uh, any kind kind of pioneer to this Rochester game, you know who vice versa is. Vice versa is like a midnight out here. Midnight vice versa produced a lot of my shit. Um. But uh, shit. I kind of did you play him a few beats, or did you play him that one beat, or what exactly happened? I played, I played him, I played him that one, the one beat I got because I had two beats. I had two beats in the in the inbox when I first pulled up to the studio. So I had sleep, and I was like, "Which one you thinking?" And then I, I sent him the one that I picked, and I was like, "What you think about that?" And he was like, "Yeah, let's go with that." So um, as soon as Frenchie heard it, he loved it. He was like, yo, y'all got that upstate shit right now. He was like, that sound is that upstate wave. That, that's that that real rap sound. He was like, I can fuck with that. And we, st we stood there and laid the track probably like 15, 20 minutes tops. Uh, that's what's up, man. So Frenchie really goes off the dome because I've never seen him in the lab. Like, but he really goes up. I didn't see him write nothing. I didn't see him write a word. Uh, that's what's up, man. Cool. Yeah, I didn't see him the word. I right, mean, I write right. it. I write in my phone, but lately, lately, I've been, I've been freestyling a little more, man. Oh, you know, yeah, when you go nice. through, most artists just gotta go through a little bit, man. And the more you <laughs> go through, and the more you do this shit, man, it naturally just drop on you, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, how was it? Uh, I mean, I was gonna say a lot of people. Um, uh, or I'm, I wasn't familiar with your past catalog, but uh. You said a record label got you for a lot of your music and stuff, but uh, what's some of your like best older songs that you have that maybe people don't know or your favorite songs that people can check out or is any of your older music ever planning on coming out or I was just wondering so so people can check it out or your best older song you did maybe. If you want to hear some of my older songs, the where where the birth of Black Sinatra came from, like it's called the birth. You can go on YouTube, you can go on Spotify, any online store, basically right now, and listen to that album. It's called The Birth. It's got 100 tracks on it. And basically, that album is everything from the beginning of my career to where I'm at right now. Okay. All those songs, all 100 songs is, is the beginning of Black Sinatra. 
Now I'm gonna be dropping shit in singles and maybe like four or five EPs I'm thinking about because I finally got the distribution I need. You know what I mean? So now that I have that, I'm gonna start dropping everything to to distribution now. Everything gonna be on billboards, everything gonna be on iTunes, everything gonna hit that now. This is the next round for me. I'm finally at that stage. I'm finally at those steps. I had to take those steps to get there. And now I finally got all the proper tools I need to take it to where I needed to go. That's what's up, man. I can tell you're moving weight now. I can tell you're starting to get there for sure, man. And uh, well, I was just back to friend you for a second. What what advice did he give to you? What did he say? Did he say really anything or he just did his verse and that was pretty much it? He pretty much just told me to stay myself. You know what I mean? He told me I pretty much had everything I need, everything it takes to be in this game. He said I was pretty much it. Another person that said the same pretty much thing was Jadakiss. You know what I mean? Like, everybody I seem to touch as far as major artists, they all pretty much are impressed with what they see me do. I mean, it's it's more my aura when I walk in the room. I, I pretty much separate myself from any artist when I, as soon as I step in, you know what I mean? I, I try to... I, I, I'm me wherever I go, is I guess I'll say that. You know what I mean? If you follow me on social media and then you meet me in person, you you going to really already be like, okay, you know, it makes sense. Yeah, 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 definitely, man. Um, I, I'm going to have to listen to those 100 songs you did. That sounds that sounds pretty good. I haven't heard it yet. Um, how was, uh, you said you had a new video uh, feature coming up with Cassidy. Like, like what was that song like? And how did that, how did that song all come together? That song is called, it's going to be called Lifetime. Um, wow. So DJ Quan the Bomb. Shout out to DJ Quan the Bomb because DJ Quan the Bomb was the DJ from our city that, like, every 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 artist that's killing it from upstate came through DJ Quan the Bomb. And me and DJ Quan the Bomb kind of got, like, the same world. We two of, the, two of the people that built our city when it came to this rap shit that, that get, that get, talked about last or doubted a lot. You know what I mean? So Quan the Bomb, he was like, yo, I got the connect, I got the connect from Cassidy for you. He t- I was like, let's go. I, I he he linked me right with Cassidy. I talked to Cassidy the next day. The next day we was locked in to do the track. Um I called him. I was like, yo, I got that paper for you. Uh what you want to do? He was like, meet me in Long Island. So I met him in Long Island at the studio. He had like five, six other sessions that he had to do that same day, but he had me come sit in all his sessions with him. So I sat through the whole day with him in all his sessions. Then he dropped my verse. You know what I mean? I didn't get to drop my verse that night in the studio with him because he had so many other sessions. But I ended up, he ended up dropping the verse for me. He was like, yo, hit me when you're ready to do the video. So I was supposed to go to Atlanta like twice in the past three weeks, but we keep having to push back the day because either the video guy can't make it that day or he got something going on or I can't make it, you know. But so right now we're in the final stages of me going to Atlanta, which will most likely be in the next two to three weeks. I'll be in Atlanta shooting that with him. And then we shooting that for major distribution. That's going to be on all platforms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Things has really been heating up for you over the past like six months, I can tell. Yeah. Yeah, it has, man. I, I've been putting a lot into my craft, and it's uh, a lot of bullshit going on in my life at the same time, too. Not not no bullshit that, you know, could plague me or nothing. The only way that that bullshit can stop me that I'm dealing with is if I go out into the streets and just act like a stupid asshole and put myself into danger. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a grown-ass man, so it's like I sit home. I'm married now. Shout out to my wife. Um hey. I'm basically at home. I'm a homebody, man. I, I got I got my dogs. I got my kids. And it's like I'm a homebody. I don't really go out much. And every dollar I make, I put into my craft. And it's finally taking off. Like I said, I finally met the right people. And it's finally taking off because I put my money where it needed to be put when it needed to be put there. And I talked to the right people. And on the way, I think it's important that people don't understand when you're coming up, you got to network with people. You got to show love to get love. And that's basically what I've been doing, you know. Yeah, that's why I've been. Um, yeah, it's a fact, man. And uh, yeah, I like Cassie, man. He's a heavyweight for sure. Um, what was it like to actually meet him, and and how was he actually like? Oh man, he he was definitely definitely solid. Is the word I pick. Um, most likely, most 
most of the street dudes that I ever fuck with, Cassidy, he's like that, you know, but he's more of a, a reserved person like myself. Like, you know, we, I can tell he's one of the people that we, we, we do the business we do. That's what we do. But as a person, he don't want you all up in his face. He ain't all talkative and he's not like that kind of person. He's very reserved, you know, he says very few words, but you know, he's going to give you the proper energy. He gave me the proper energy. He, he told me I was, I was it basically. He was another person that told me like, yeah, you're going to be good. You're going to do exactly what you do and whatever you need. You let me know when we rock it. It was a blessing to be in the room with him. You know, I don't, when I'm in the room with those kind of people, man, I don't look, I'm not sitting there like I'm with some mega superstar or nothing like that. Like I'm not, I don't be blown away and shit like that. I feel like I'm the same as them. You know what I mean? They do the same as me. They just got there before me, and now I'm connecting the dot with them to get where they at. You know what I mean? So. Oh, I know, I know. I just, I just man, he's a he's a crazy spitter. I just man, like what he's actually like in the booth. You know what he what he what uh if you if he play you play him the beat or what happened? Like I was just wondering what happened. Yeah, I, played that him the beat. I played him the beat, man. He by the time I played him the beat, it took him about a good 10, 15 minutes. He was in there and he killed the shit. He don't write or not. He goes straight off the dome, you know. But uh. Oh, yeah. He was with and his manager, and they both heard the beat. And his his manager, what made me feel good, his manager was like, "Yo, you you had the hit record out of all of his sessions today." So that made me feel good. And uh, when Cassidy heard the hook, he was like, "Damn!" He was like, "I fuck with that." And he heard the hook and the beat, and he went in. It, it, it took him a matter of minutes, man. He's he's a he's like a professional in the booth. He go in there and spit that shit like it ain't nothing. Walk out like it ain't nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> I can tell. Yeah, I've seen videos of him before. I can tell. Right? He's, that's a fact. He's a veteran, man. Yeah, so that's... Yeah. All, no, I was going to say, all the artists I work with is all down-to-earth people, man. I've never... I, I've never... All the artists I work with, I didn't walk away feeling like, oh, I never want to fuck with him again. Who does he think he is? I, I've never had that experience with none of them. Yeah. Um, I I forgot to ask you what what did uh what did Frenchie say about uh about uh what the hell's his name uh fucking so icy no uh, Gucci man what did he say about him? Uh, no we ain't really talking about no Gucci man or nobody like that uh, Frenchie was a very quiet dude man he 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 listened he listened a lot you know he didn't he didn't talk a lot he just. He had great energy. We smoked a whole lot of weed, drank a lot of champagne. We recorded our shit. And, you know, we kicked it for about, like, probably 10, 15 minutes after the session. And we was planning to shoot the video, and he ended up going going away before we got a chance to shoot the video. Oh, uh, that's what's up, man. Yeah, free Frenchie, man. Yeah. Um. And did uh, did Cassie Cassie say anything else about your uh, your rhymes or anything like that, or say anything else about your music, or that was about it? No, I mean, said the Cassidy Cassidy is still in play. That shit ain't wrapped up yet. So basically, when I seen him, man, he told me it was, I was official, and he fucking with me. You know what I mean? So when I go to Atlanta, that's the next. That's going to be the next meeting. And when I come back home, I'm gonna have a video in my hands and. The next step after that is going to hit all major platforms. And we're going to touch a million views on this video. God damn it. That's going to be my first million view video. I'm saying it here first, man. You heard it. You know? No, I know, man. <laughs> Griselda and all them dudes really paved the way for upstate, man. Even though the older dudes, even them, are, are winning. You know what I'm saying? So you, you're you're, get, you're getting there for damn sure, man. I know Great God's on his way up fast, too. You know what I'm saying? So. No question. Oh, yeah, shit can roll out here in upstate, man. We pretty much, I think we pretty much, upstate is pretty much controlling the whole rap scene majorly. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, it's, it's heavy up here right now. That's what's up, man. So how was it? I know you said you won a competition with Jadakiss. Was that pretty much the first time you were, like, closer with him? Or did you know him before that? Uh, I, I've known, I've known Jadakiss him remembering me is a different thing than me knowing him. You understand what I'm saying? So my first interaction with Jada face to face was I was about 23 years old. I'm 41 now. So that was a long time ago. I met, I met Jada 
a good three or four times before I won this competition. The time before I won the competition, he acknowledged me more. When I won the competition, he finally acknowledged me. Thank you for everyone watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up. It helps me make more content and share this video. Thank you. God bless you. So how did that competition go exactly? I would break it down from start to finish. What exactly happened? There was 32 artists that performed in front of Jadakiss. He was looking for the next big thing. I was the last out of all 32 artists. And I ended up finishing in the top three. Oh, wow. Uh, that's right. something. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy, right? So, um, like I said, uh, I kicked it off. I was the last artist he seen, and he was amazed by the first four words I spit in my freestyle when I grabbed the mic. Like, him and his boys were sitting there, and they, they faces, they jaws dropped. Like, holy shit, where did this dude come from? Like, what did you say? Yeah. What do you mean? What, what did were I your say? words exactly? Do you remember? Yeah, it was a freestyle I spit. But I said, uh, which one was it? How does it go? I said, I feel pain, see pain, live pain, because pain me. Inside, I cry, nigga, the pain deep. Late night, some woke, nigga, I can't sleep. It's cigarettes, one by one, and they ain't cheap. And it's like his face, his face dropped. Like, <laughs> it was like, but I spit an acapella, though. I came in with no beat. You know what I mean? So it was like, out of all the out, out of all the acts that night, like I was the first one that came in that like hip hop. Like everybody came in with that new shit, you know, the bouncy ass beats and all that auto tune shit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Jadakiss, Jadakiss is a spitter. Like why would you go there with some shit like that? Like if you know him like that, that's how I'm thinking in my head. So you know, I went there with hip hop. I went there with some shit that I can see him listening to. I perform some shit. And I, I I feel like he he saw hip hop. He heard hip hop, man. He was definitely blown away. Yeah, Jada Kiss is one of my favorites, man. He goes crazy, man. I love his rhymes. He's a legend, man. And yeah, uh, so so I heard that you got a song coming out with uh, Jada Kiss, and you were in the studio with him. How, how did that come about? I don't have a song coming out with him yet, but what he's going to be in the studio. Him and Big Mike will be in the studio with me during a live studio session. So they're basically about to sit there and watch me do my thing. Basically, they're scouting me, seeing if, you know, another, 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 them watching me, seeing what I do type of session. You know what I mean? Okay, so you haven't made a song yet with him. No, but more, more. How I'm taking it, more grooming me to see if he's gonna put me on so raspy. Oh, uh, okay, nice. Uh, so. Which I hope is the case. You know what I mean? Which I hope is the case. That's what's up. I, man. I'm telling you now, I ain't signing with no major label. That is, that is not gonna happen. Yeah. I would, I, I would, I would, I would sign a contract with Jada Kiss. I would work something out with Kiss. Because yeah. I, I know Kiss's journey. I know the journey he's been through with this music shit is similar to mine. So I know the ins and outs myself now. I would be I would be curious to see what he would offer. Yeah, I know uh, his artist Millie's is killing it, man. So yeah, yeah that's gonna, that's going to be one of the next big features that I'm locking into. That's right, the lane I'm good. trying to. You know, that's like that's really like my favorite spitter right now, Millie. Yeah. Real shit. <laughs> he's got the machine behind him. I can tell. Man. He's going crazy. Oh, yeah. I got him behind me, too, right now. I'm about to turn up right now, too. Yeah, I'm about to see. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't turn up. You can't turn up. <coughs> you can't turn up like you got to turn up <coughs> without the machine, bro. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be the machine involved in there somehow, some way. You can't just do them thousand and two thousand and three thousand likes on a stat and a a video on the gram and shit. You don't just do that shit. Yeah, I know. you don't do that shit, bro. This it right, and and that's that's the motion that I'm in right now. So it's like this gets this music shit get more critical once you start get into that step because it's. 
You can't just be throwing music out. You can't just drop a song and say, I dropped the song yesterday. Now, now the songs start coming slower once you get on that on that lane because now as an independent artist, it's a budget you gotta put up. All this shit ain't free. Mm-hmm. All these numbers y'all see, these mega numbers and all that shit, that shit costs money, man. That this shit ain't just happening, bro. You gotta know a motherfucker that's gonna let you in that portal. You understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. Like it's it, this this shit don't just happen, man. First of all, it's it's years, it's years of grind before somebody gonna give you an opportunity. It's meeting this person and meet that person to meet this next person. And then every time you got an opportunity, you gotta make sure you had a paper to fill that opportunity. Because every time opportunity you get gonna cost even another amount of money. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, I heard you had a show coming up with Jadica soon. Uh, how'd that all come about? And class murder and everything. Um, knowing a person, you know, uh, shout out to comedian Jay Real. Um, he just knew the person throwing the show, and I had just won that Jada shit. So it was like, it was just perfect timing for me, you know? And I reached out, and he tied that knot for me, and boom, we lit now. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, what did Jada say about your freestyle and about you and everything? What, were, what did he say? What was it advice? Or he, he, told me, he, he said, I, I am New York. Like, the, I am what the game the game is right now. He told me to put my all in. He said, go all in right now because it's guaranteed you're going to get through. He was like, be you, stay you. What you are is going to work for you. He was like, you're the epitome of this, of this shit, basically. He was like, everything you got, he was like, go all, all the way in with it, and it's going to happen. He was like, there's no way. He was like, there's not. Cool. Yeah. yeah. That means something coming from him. That's for damn sure. Oh, no, that's, a, that's a definite fact. That's probably one of the biggest smiles on my face. If you if you see the picture on my uh, Instagram when I won, it was me, Jada, and another dude standing there, and the smile on Jada's face said it all. You know what I mean? Like... <laughs> Come on, bro. That was like the best day of my life. <laughs> What's up? Fuck you. Come on, that was the first time. Um, and what 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 happened? Uh, you said this is fifty coming up, or what? What's that? What's that about? Like, it's something about that. Well, got a big interview coming up on this is fifty. Uh, I don't have the exact date for that yet, but. That's gonna be a next. Uh, I'm probably gonna do the this is fifty when uh after I drop the the Cassidy. I need a drink, man. Like, I got you. Know, I'm probably gonna do this is fifty after I do this Cassidy video. Oh, good, good. I'll be live on this is fifty. I'm actually going to New York. I'll be live in the studio on this is fifty doing the interview. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually got the dots pretty much well connected right now. After this Cassidy record is it's gonna be a see. You could just gonna see so much more for me. I actually got a big major major radio connect on the Power 105.5 in New York and Power 105.5 here in Rochester. So once I drop that record, it's just about to get crazy. It's about to get crazy for me. Every lane that I need, I got now. You know what I mean? For sure. What's been your secret to success? Because things have really been picking up for you over the last six months. Like it's been getting. I've I uh, haven't talked to you in a little bit. And you've been just really doing doing numbers. Like getting a lot of things going since since I last talked to you. Just been all gas, no brakes. Man, I just, I literally, my secret to success, man, is just, I finally focused on on me. Like, really, that that's really what it was. I'm, I'm kind of been that person that that got so big of a heart, and I get, I put out so much for other people, you know, and I took so many losses from doing that, and. I finally just found a way to say fuck it, and it, I, it's just all about me right now. And I don't really give a fuck who likes me. I don't care who likes me. I don't give a fuck what people say about me no more. I don't fucking care. I just really got to the point that I just don't fucking care no more. And that's, I think that's my biggest secret to success. And second to that is my kids. You know, like you once you once you've been in the streets all all, all your life, like I have. And you you've took the failures that I've took. You you start to grow. You start to grow mentally. You start to grow 
you start to care about more things than yourself. And what I say is care about more things than yourself is like, once you go out and make an action, you think about the other people involved in your life. And you know, that's, that's another thing that changed in my life. And then I got married, you know, when I got married, that's another, that's another thing that I've been instilling in my mind. I basically, so at the root of that is saying to you that I, I finally started putting myself first and caring about the people that are really important that care about me. That's my secret. And I stay, I stay in prayer. Like I pray, I pray, I pray more than you would probably ever be. You know? Those are, I think those are my secrets right there because I mean, I stay myself. I really don't wake up with an agenda. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think people can connect with you since you're being yourself because people can relate, not some like fake person and stuff like that. No question. Yeah, but yeah. My music is more like a pain flow. You know, I'm not I'm not heavy with the punchlines or the harmonies and shit like that. You know what I mean? I just I spit it straight from the chest, man. You know what I mean? Like even yeah. even in life where I'm at, if I'm talking to people, it's the same way. Yeah. Yeah, I can tell. I pray too. Yeah, that helps. I agree. Um, it definitely does. Yeah. Um, yeah um, you, you want to talk about, uh, you said something about Big Mike. Uh, you were working with him. Uh, let everyone know yeah. who he is that they haven't heard, heard from him. I guess you said he was a big name, but um, I'm not too familiar with him, so if you could tell people about him. So Big Mike is a legendary DJ. If you... Most people that came up listening to uh, that 90s rap, that early 90s, early 2000s, when Queens and all them shits was heavy, Big Mike was one of the biggest major DJs out there putting out all that fire shit before the clues and around that time. That's when Big Mike was heavy. So all the shows and our shit, how I've been linking with Dave East, how I've been linking up with Jada, how, how y'all been seeing me with them people is through Big Mike. Well, that's what's up, man, for sure. Yeah. So, so I've basically been connecting the dot with the forefathers of hip hop, man. I went right. I went to the OGs to get my co-signs to pull me through the door. I didn't. I didn't start dancing out here with none of these new niggas. Like I went to the Godfathers of this shit. 